we're looking at here is, is, is it's not only a question why we call America or is America really the leader of the free world. And if we took the free world as, as those nations that all have a kind of a shared worldview, and a shared worldview is really about the institutions, the political, the economic, and the social institutions. And so let's take them one at a time here. And let's start with the political institutions and say, okay, the basic worldview is that the main political institution is democracy. So it's about the people, for the people, by the people. And, and Fukuyama says that one of the basic premises of democracy is that the reason it became number one is that it maximizes the number of citizens that have a say in their own history, where they feel that, like what they're doing is, is affecting their life. <clears throat> but then if we look at America, and let's look at some of the examples, like in the Electoral College, just in the most recent election, in the Electoral College, by the we, we basically silenced three the voice of three million citizens in the Electoral College. Then if we look at just our basic structure, we look at the Wyoming has a 600,000 citizens, but has two senators and one representative. California, on the other hand, has 38 million citizens. They have two senators and 53 representatives. So the Senate is certainly way out of balance there. Uh, yeah, and the House of Representatives is, is even out of balance in terms of if you divide 38 million by 600,000, you get more like 63 or 65 House of Representatives. So, so both of them are out of, out of sync. Then we take other things that are going on in America, that are like gerrymandering, which and, and basically what's happening is that with gerrymandering, the, they're, they're, some of the parties are able to, to, to manipulate the structure of the, of the system or of, of the voting districts so that they actually can silence a certain people. Normally, it's the people of color. So, and then even to back to the, the just basic American constitution, the constitution itself advantages liberty over equality. So it says that liberty is more important than equality. And I don't know why that's necessarily the case. And then Fukuyama says, let's look at the six major criteria that contribute to democratic decay. And I have, a, there's a separate YouTube I have on, on, on this issue. But basically, if you look at all six of them in America, you know, we, we basically have all, you know, we got them all, all right? We are, so, so it's very hard in my mind for us to say that, that we are a, a political leader, right? So then maybe it's in the economic world. Let's look at the economic world and say, okay, capitalism, are we the, are we the leader in, in, in capitalism? Well, in its raw state, market capitalism is all about basically private enterprise, competition, private property, the profit motive, and consumer sovereignty. Those are the five pillars of market capitalism. Now, the challenge here is that market capitalism is, is, is dependent very much upon rule of law. If we don't have laws, then, then we wouldn't support the private property, and most of the other items would fall apart. So rule of law is very important, and where does rule of law reside? And rule of law actually resides in the middle between democracy and capitalism. It's how the two systems come together. So this model represents how the two come together. And basically what, what Fukuyama says is that everyone, regardless of class or wealth, has to play by the same set of rules. So do we see in America that all the classes all play by the same set of rules? Because that's what really makes the economic system function correctly. And I think that's another area where we have an uh -oh in terms of different sets of rules. Then we look at the social, which is the, the, the final set of institutions. And this is where if we take the, our, our basic model that we had of, of democracy and capitalism and we, and we add to it humanism, right? This is a, becomes a three-dimensional or a three-ven model. And humanism says, hey, let's, what are the services that are being provided to our citizens? Security and food, education, housing, legal opportunities, health services. You know, what are they and, and how do they all work? And Fukuyama broke them down into some, some really nice categories. He says, you know, we manage and regulate externalities. It's, that has to happen. That, that's not going to happen by either of the other two systems. Provide public goods, all right? Regulate social programs and control elites. These are things that, 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 are, a, uh, that are necessary in order to, for the, the, the citizens to be represented and the services to be delivered correctly. And these are services that wouldn't be delivered naturally by capitalism. In, in America, I think that we see that those, institute, those services are also wanting. So I think it's really hard for us to, it, to, to, it, to be true to ourselves to say that America is the leader of the free world. You know, I, we, have to, we have to stop kidding ourselves. You know, Vonnegut talks about us the way we talk about the 1492 being such a, 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 you know, a year. Of, and basically, he says it's, it's really 1492 is when a bunch of European sea pirates uh, uh, captured and, 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 and brutalized uh, uh, the world. And they did it because nobody else believed until it was too late how heartless and greedy they were. 
If we take the word sea pirates and change that to wealthy white American oligarchy, I think we see the same thing. So the Americans of the 21st century have right now really been willing or, or, or open to brutalizing the planet. They don't seem to want to change any of that. They brutalize every other species on the planet. They don't seem to, to, to be working on that. And they even brutalize any citizens or their own citizens or citizens that don't agree with them. So it's, it's a question of they're, they're heartless, greedy, and brutal. And we see an awful lot of heartless, greedy, and brutal. And even if we look at a chart and where the chart has, you know, the, to the to, let's say the far right on one side and the far left on the other. And right now, since the far right are, 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 are in, in power, you know, let's look at, you know, they believe in a zero sum transactional approach. They believe they put their interests ahead of values or human rights. And, and, and the idea is that our thoughts are that, oh, well, that those people only exist at the, at the outer edges. But in reality, they don't. They exist more closer to the middle. I mean, 60 million people voted for those principles. So I just don't think that, I think we have to be true to ourselves and say that America is not and has never been the leader of the free world, not even since 1492.